If you've ever had a nutrition client struggling to get results, regardless what you try or suggest, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to today. I'm gonna to go over a really tough client case and some strategies that took one client from aimless and struggling to her first world championship. Let's dive into how to get results for the toughest client's case study. Nutrition coaching is the best job ever. There's nothing more inspiring than helping a nutrition client completely transform. It reaffirms exactly why I became a nutrition coach, using the science of nutrition to help others become the best version of themselves. It's life-changing for them, but I've also learned how much purpose it gives me too. In the story, I'm going to share with you today is no different. I want to tell you about my nutrition client, Arlene. It has made the world of difference. It's been really incredible, really incredible. Arlene is no typical lady. She retired in 2013 and started to go to her local gym where it was suggested that she start powerlifting. You know, the competitive strength sport that requires you to squat, bench, and deadlift really heavy weights. At first she thought, well, I'm too old and I got a bad knee, so she sort of dismissed it. But after some convincing, she did her first competition in the spring of 2017. She was hooked. She's been told she's competitive, but she just thinks she enjoys the process process of improving and working towards something and staying focused. Before you know it, Arlene had become a very successful lifter. She worked up the competitive ladder doing provincials and then nationals and actually doing her first world competition within the first year. By 2019, she had pulled a world record deadlift of 153 kilos in the 84 kilo class. But at this point, she was at a crossroads. To continue to improve as a powerlifting athlete, Arlene needed to shift her focus to gaining more muscle and losing more fat and realize nutrition was a big part of that. This is where I stepped in and Arlene hired me to be her nutrition coach. At the beginning, she was so surprised with how much she needed to eat. See, she was stuck in the diet mentality of thinking she needed to go low fat or low carb. But when I started around 1800 plus calories with more protein and more carbohydrates, she was really surprised. But this didn't surprise me because I knew based on my experience and her training, this was a great place to start. Here's what did surprise me though. Originally, Arlene wanted to body recomp, which is essentially losing weight and losing body fat, but also gaining some muscle and lift in the 72 kilo weight class. This would mean losing around 15 total pounds. But Arlene is in her early 60s. And as you know, many women in Arlene's age bracket would love to achieve something like this. But there are some things that make it much harder to accomplish. But listen to this. In six months, Arlene didn't just make the 72 kilo class. She was able to drop a total of 35 pounds and compete in the 63 kilo class. I was I was quite ex excited about it because it was, uh, well, you know, I mean, we all want to be healthier and I certainly yep. felt healthier. Yep. And I was eating two full weight classes down from where she started and actually eating more than what she was eating before we started working together. Are you ready for the real shock though? When she was 18, Arlene was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, which is an inflammatory bowel disease of the gastrointestinal tract. She's battled this for many years and years, surgery after surgery. This alone influenced how her body reacted to lifting and exercise. In 2000, she had an ileostomy, which was life-changing for her. But when she started powerlifting, this presented some body image issues due to the powerlifting singlet she needed to wear and the belt she needed to wear during competition. Although she was able to work through that, the ileostomy made it tough to manage her bowels between lifts. Biggest issue that I found was on day of competition was being able to manage my bowel so that you know, sometimes the time between lifts is pretty limited. And uh, as anyone with Crohn's disease or an ileostomy knows, like you just don't have control over that. And so that was a stressful, that was a stress piece of life, you know, at, co at competitions. So that was the biggest thing, you know, the body image, I got over that, you know, just deal with yeah. it type thing and, mm -hmm. and adapting to the, you know, to placement of uh, equipment. But the, the stress around the managing the uh, ileostomy during the day of competition was, was pretty intense. So not only was Arlene trying to accomplish a major change in her body composition, which too many at her age can feel like an impossible task, she was also managing a serious condition with her bowel. But fast forward a few years and not only was Arlene able to lose 35 pounds and keep it off, but she won her first world championship and managing her ileostomy on game day has never been better. Now, since Arlene's situation is pretty complex, I wanted to share with you three lessons I learned through this process. A quick disclaimer though before we start. Number one, it's great to learn from individual cases, but keep in mind that every situation is unique. So you can't just take these specific strategies and apply them to another case and expect them to work. And it's also a good moment to go over the scope of a nutrition coach. So as I told you, Arlene has Crohn's disease, which is a specific medical issue. As a nutrition coach, I can't prescribe or suggest a specific plan or meal plan to cure or manage that disease. But I can help her with strategies to boost her performance and change her body composition as a powerlifter. There's a difference here and it's important to know. With that being said, let's dive into the 
lesson. Lesson number one, the thermostat method. When working with athletes that want to lose weight, we always want to get away with having them lose at an acceptable rate while eating as much food as possible. With Arlene, if I just had to listen to what the textbook or a calculator had recommended she eat, probably would have been eating closer to 1500 calories. Also remember everyone is different and the average is just the middle of a bunch of data points on a range. So Arlene could be a little bit higher than normal, but that's okay because that's what we determine using the thermostat method. And chances are this 1500 calories is what Arlene had tried in the past when she did things like low carb or low fat and they never worked. Introduce the thermostat method. Think about the thermostat in your house. You make a small change to the temperature and the furnace kicks in or the AC kicks in to adjust that temperature to it and then it stops. This is the exact same thing we want to do with someone's energy intake. I got a better sense of what was maintaining Arlene's weight at 170 pounds and made a small realistic drop from there to 1800 calories per day. So I got a better sense of what was actually happening than just trusting a calculation that would say it was 1500 calories. From there she actually started losing more weight than expected so it actually added more food in just like you would do with the thermostat and the heat in your home. The key here is always trying to get away with eating as much food as you can while losing weight at an acceptable rate which in her case was around one pound per week. This is what helped Arlene lose 35 pounds and keep it off and it is especially important with aging athletes. And lesson number two is compromise. Before Arlene and I started working together she said she was eating well with her meals but she also described having some bad habits she wanted to shake. As a nutrition coach I firmly believe that no food is good or bad just better or worse in the context of the client's goals but Arlene knew herself well enough to know that there were some things that she was doing and some habits that she had and foods she was eating that were sabotaging her success. These bad habits included eating full-size family bags of chips and candy and also making bad decisions when she was in social situations or eating out. In order to be successful she felt she needed to avoid these things entirely. Normally I would suggest to a client not to avoid a food entirely but in Arlene's case she felt so strongly about it I supported it. Weight loss is all about compromise and trade-offs. You can't have everything so you need to determine what is worth the trade-off in order to reach your goals. This is very important for long-term success. Lesson number three, game day nutrition and the ileostomy. It has taken 95% of the stress away from Amazing. managing my ileostomy on the day of a competition. Game day nutrition is very important for strength athletes. Although you train for weeks and months, what you eat the day of a competition can really impact your performance. As an athlete, you're always trying to balance your performance in the short term, which is going to be a performance in the event over the course of hours, and the long term, which is improving body composition over weeks and months and years and overall health. In the long term, most athletes trying to lose weight will want to prioritize food choices that include lean protein and a lot of fruits and vegetables and things with high volume and not a lot of calories. This keeps them full and helps them manage their overall energy intake. But the focus in the short term should be on energy and performance. Generally speaking, this means less protein and fat and more carbohydrate, while also making most of the food choices you eat. Put differently, you don't want to waste a lot of space with foods that don't have high carbohydrate and high calories. Additionally, for weight class athletes, eating higher calorie, lower density food choices allows them to consume more energy and way less heading into a competition, which can be really, really helpful for weight cutting. In our lean situation with our ileostomy, making some of these higher calorie, lower food volume choices to boost her performance, gave her more energy and ended up helping her control her bowels, which was a game changer for her lifting. Was there anything specifically for game day stuff with the ileostomy that you found helpful? That that was the plan that you put in 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 motion for me was was a real unbelievable game changer. You know, the the day before the meet, you have me eating. Let's see if I get this wording right. Like um, uh, high calorie, low volume. Exactly. But, but good good choices. You know, right. well, uh, mm -hmm. like and and of course I have to stay away from the nuts and the seeds um, during those days. So I have to choose again, choose the food that's not going to block me. But right. that's high volume, high calories, low mm -hmm. low volume exactly. yep. for that day before. And mm -hmm. then the day of the meat, then I basically stick with um, easy to digest carbs and again, stay away from the a lot of fiber. Add that to food choices that she knew she could tolerate and wouldn't lead to a blockage made the world of a difference for her lifting. This strategy could be really helpful for other athletes in the same situation as Arlene. It's not very often you get to help a nutrition client like Arlene. A 60 year old plus powerlifting grandma dropped two weight classes despite her situation. But when you understand the science of nutrition and the art of nutrition coaching, you can help some of the toughest clients achieve some very remarkable results. As great as all these tips are, if you're really serious about starting an online nutrition coaching business, the next thing I'll have you do is check out this video I have linked up here. Now that you know how to work with tough clients, let's find out how to keep them organized. So make sure to check it out now and I'll see you in the next video.